Short video for you today, quick update on the EPS or electrical power system. I finally and hopefully finished the EPS schematic. This has taken me long enough. In this video, I'm just going to do a high level overview of the schematic. I'm gonna save the real detailed deep dive for another video, but don't worry, that's coming. And if you wanna look ahead at the schematic, that is linked in the description. So let's get into it. First off, this upper section is for the solar panels, battery chargers, and battery output. Up here is voltage regulators, and down here we have a power management IC or PMIC, load switching, current monitoring, and the interboard connector, which connects this to the rest of the CubeSat. Focusing in, you can see the solar inputs, and they are all connected together, as I discussed in a previous video. These are feeding into a maximum power point tracker which outputs 5 volts. This 5 volt output goes into a power good load switch which will only turn on if the power good signal from this maximum power point tracker is indicated. That way these battery chargers only ever see 5 volts and not some intermediary voltage which could cause some glitches of some kind. In addition, I have external power which is just a micro USB that will be useful for development and both of those feed into these battery chargers. These battery chargers, I have two of them just for redundancy sake, and each one is connected to one battery. These guys output into an ideal diode, and this ideal diode ORs the two battery voltages together, and from there we have VBUS output. Moving right along, VBUS only goes to these regulators here. We take the battery voltage and put it into this 3.3 volt regulator, and a 5 volt high power regulator. This 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volt regulator was actually convenient. It is the same LTC 3130 that the maximum power point tracker. It's the same LTC 3130 that's used over here, just with a couple different tweaks. You can have it output 3 volts, 3.3 volts, and you can disable the maximum power point tracking. So it's convenient that I get to reuse that chip here. This 5 volt regulator is what I plan on hooking up to a high power device like a radio. That's why I have this 5 volt regulator spec'd up to 2 amps output. Moving right along, we have the power management IC. On the bottom half of the schematic, we have current monitors and load switching, and then a pretty simple interboard connector. Starting with the power management IC, the chip that I use in here isn't anything special, it's actually the same STM32 chip that I use for the avionics board. I figured more reuse is better and easier for me to make. So the schematic in here looks essentially the same except it has no sensors. In addition it has a lot more GPIOs that I open up to use for things such as controlling the battery charger and controlling the ideal diode. I have some ADCs here which read in the solar voltages so I can get a rough sense of which solar panels are receiving sun and which are not. I also have inputs from the battery so I can see what battery voltages we're at. Now before I get into what all of these GPIOs do, I want to talk about the current monitor and load switching. This is a circuit designed for space where radiation can have adverse effects on the operation of the circuit and specifically what I am most worried about is single event latch-ups. Essentially ionizing radiation can cause shorts in some integrated circuits and this can cause them to burn out if you don't quickly realize that there is a problem and then shut off power to that circuit. So it makes things a little bit tricky because essentially you just need current monitoring for everything and you need to be able to switch nearly every power rail to every different device. What I, and what I have done is I've, I have 16 power rails for 3.3 volts and I have two 5 volt power rails and each of these power rails has a load switch. And let's take a look at what that looks like. To control those 16 power rails, I have essentially this circuit inside. So power enters over here, goes through a shunt resistor, a load switch which has an on or off control and is output to whatever load is out there. Now by default, driving this input signal high to a high voltage will turn on the load switch allowing current to flow from the power source to the load and driving this control voltage low will turn off the load switch. By default I have it pulled up with a weak resistor pull up. A weak resistor pull up that way it can be overridden by either the 
power management IC or this current monitor or external reset circuit. So the power management IC can drive this signal low, which will turn off the load switch and allows the power management IC individual control for all 16 of those voltage rails. In addition, I have a current monitor, which is connected to this shunt resistor. So it's measuring how much current is going into the load. And if it goes over a specified bound, it will trip and turn off the load switch. I also have an external reset signal, which accomplishes the same thing. If you trigger this, it will turn off the load switch. Both the current monitor and external reset go through a hold off circuit, which will just hold the load switch in the off position for a little while, giving everything time to reset just as an extra safety precaution. What I really like about this circuit is how this PMIC GPIO is both an input into the circuit, turning off the load switch if I so want, and it is also an output out of the circuit, indicating to the power management IC if an overcurrent event happens or if there is some external reset. That is because since this is weakly pulled up, the PMIC does not have to do anything if it wants this load switch to be on. The PMIC can simply watch this line to see if anything pulls it low. The current monitor or external reset could pull this line low, indicating that something outside has happened that the power management IC should be aware of. So with this in mind, let's take a look at the block where I use these load switches. So you can see that I have all of these on and off switches going directly over to the power man management IC, where I have a whole bunch of GPIOs that are controlling if this switch is on or off. I also have these reset signals coming out, and what's really useful with these is that I can hook them together, and I have them all hooked up, uh, for example, 1 through 8, which correspond to the avionics STM all the way through its magnetometer. These reset signals are hooked up together, and this AVI extern reset signal goes off board, which goes to the avionics board. So it allows the avionics board to simply and easily reset itself. Because of how these reset signals are set up, where, where each one of them go through this buffer, an external reset signal will reset all these eight power rails. However, an individual power rail could be commanded off by the PMIC without causing the rest of the power rails to also be off. It's not an all or nothing situation. Along with the GPIOs that control the load switches, I also have some specific interrupt signals which listen for changes on these power rails to detect if there's a current overload or reset condition of some kind. These 3.3 volt power rails also create the power for the PMIC itself. These three power rails, 13, 14, and 15, are also reset controlled by the power management IC's watchdog and an external reset signal as well. So say the avionics board could command the power management IC to reset if it thinks it's failing for some reason. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I have spec'd out parts and prices for everything and this board comes out to be roughly $160 for just parts. And I've also started to look at the layout, which I think I will drop in here. There is about 10 pounds of components to fit into a five pound bag. So hopefully everything fits. I was planning originally on using four batteries. So each battery charger would charge two batteries, not just one battery. But from looking at the layout, I had to scale that back because that just wasn't going to fit. Anyway, I'll have another video coming at you soon. Until then, thanks for watching.